And now I invite uh, Mrs. Linda Sheely, who is the chair of the Committee of Reference and Council, to report on, to the assembly of the resolutions that have been submitted for consideration. The Committee of Reference and Council has received a resolution on living into the unity of the body of Christ. You should find a printed copy of this resolution on your table, or you can go to the documents page of our Senate website to access it as I read the resolution. A resolution on living into the unity of the body of Christ. Whereas scripture witnesses to God's desire to embrace all people who seek to worship their creator, even those led to believe they surely would be separated from God's people, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcast of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Isaiah 56, 7 through 8. And whereas the body of Christ is one unified body with a diversity of members bound together by the Holy Spirit through baptism, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks. Slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. From 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. And whereas God has created the body of Christ as a diverse unity for mutual care and upbuilding, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 25 through 27. And whereas congregations are to teach the scriptures according to the model constitution, B402, to participate in God's mission, this congregation as a part of the church shall be, nurture its members in the word of God so as to grow in faith and hope and love, to see daily life as the primary setting for the exercise of their Christian calling, and to use the gifts of the Spirit for their life together and for their calling in the world. B403, to fulfill these purposes, the congregation shall teach the Word of God. And whereas the ELCA is one church body organized into three expressions congregations, synods, and the church wide organization with each expression having its particular functions, but all three together, sharing a common mission of doing God's work in the world and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And whereas there is ample space for a wide diversity of viewpoints, among the unified members of the body of Christ is embodied in the three expressions of the ELCA. And whereas the social statements issued by the church-wide organization of the ELCA are non-binding, teaching documents shared as such with other members of the body, and whereas scripture cautions regarding divisions within the body. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind, in the same purpose, from 1 Corinthians 1, 10. Therefore be it resolved, that the people and congregations of the South Carolina Synod ELCA will enter into an intentional one-year period of Bible study and discernment upon, one, the nature of the body of Christ is revealed in Scripture and expressed in the world, two, the nature of the three expressions of the ELCA, three, the interrelationship between one and two for the purpose of doing God's work in the world and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, and be it further resolved, that the bishop's office will provide the conferences and congregations resources to help facilitate this intentional one-year study, including opportunities for partnering and individuals to help lead study and discussion, 
and be it further resolved that South Carolina Synod Conference deans would work closely with the Bishop's Office to foster communication, make the aforementioned resources available, and assist congregations with entering into the intentional one-year period, and be it finally resolved that reflections upon these studies and conversations be shared at the 2024 South Carolina Synod Assembly. Submitted May 24, 2023, edited May 25, 2023, by Reverend Bobby Morris and Reverend Harden Hallman. Upon the recommendation from the Committee of Reference and Council, I move the adoption of a resolution on living into the unity of the body of Christ. Thank you. Because this comes from the committee, we do not need a second. We have already taken a registration count, and I note that we have 331 voting members present. So at this time, I invite the authors, if they wish to do so, to come to a microphone and speak to this resolution. Hold on. Microphone two. There, there we go. go. Now, you. that's better. Bobby Morris, Mount Pilgrim Lutheran Church. Um, Jesus cautions us in Matthew chapter 12 that a kingdom, a city, indeed even a house divided itself against itself cannot stand. And the fact is, we have been dealing with differences of opinion and perspective and even interpretation of scripture at the very least since Acts chapter 10. <laughs> We've never agreed on everything. And that's not a bad thing. The problem is when it divides us and pits us against one another. And we were given this morning fan, fan the flames. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever you call those things. Mm -hmm. Fan the flames. Fans, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> One of the issues that we're up against is that there's money to be made when the flames of division are fanned. Every day our so-called news networks, and I mean every single one of them, fan flames to divide us because it makes them money, folks. We can fan flames too, but we can fan flames of unity, unity in the body of Christ. And what better way to do that this, than with an intentional immersion in our sacred scriptures? Not that we're not doing that already in our congregations, but what would it look like to do that together as a synod? And to do it intentionally in such a way that, now hear me clearly, there's nothing wrong with a nice, calm study of, let's say, Ephesians. But maybe we should go a little further than that and talk about some of the stuff that's making the news networks money that our folks want to talk about. To talk about our differences and our unity in the midst of those differences. To put those things on the table and talk about them and do so with Scripture and the Holy Spirit as our guide. What kind of flames could we fan by doing that? Thank you. Well, Arden Hallman, Bethlehem Lutheran Church, Pomeria. Sometimes you just get tired. You just get tired of seeing folks use scripture 
to drive us apart rather than bring us together. I once commented to folks that in the last 30 years, we made a big mistake and we decided we did not want to be controversial. I think be probably because we were afraid. And if we don't deal with the kind of stuff that people want and need us to talk about, then we are missing what that man from Galilee was talking about. It's time. It's time. And being afraid of it will eat us. Too many people are being hurt by this stuff, and we can either deal with it or stick our heads in the sand or wherever. So we got to make our choices. Sometimes you got to decide who you're going to follow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, pastors. At this time, I would ask if there are any other members of the assembly that wish to talk to this uh, resolution. I invite you to come to microphone one if you are in favor of it, and microphone three if you are opposed. Remember that uh, as we speak at assembly, we have two minutes. I would uh, be hoping that I could go back and forth between um, so we can hear from those who are in favor and those who are opposed. And we, uh, we hope that we, we hope, I, I want you all to have the chance to say what you want to say, but I hope that we won't get to a place where it's ultra repetitive. And um, perhaps it might be good if we had uh, up to three people on each side to speak. All right. I recognize microphone one. Thank you. John White, St. Matthews, Charleston. Um, this is actually just a question for the authors. Um, is, it, is the vision that this, this process begin now with the final resolve expressing a conclusion to be read out at next year's assembly, or does the final resolve say that it'll be sort of an in-progress report on the presumption that the, the, the project has started sometime between now and then. Well, I would hope that our, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I should answer for this, the authors, but I have had conversation with them. Um, I would hope that our study of scripture would be ongoing, but the project needs a little bit of time to get kicked off. So should the assembly vote in favor of this project, we hope for a kickoff in the month of October to celebrate Reformation. Thank you. I recognize uh, microphone three. Thank you, Bishop. This is Richard Moose, uh, Trinity Greenville. Uh, my comment is also in the form of a question, uh, I suppose, to the authors, having listened to uh, how they represented um, their purpose uh, with the proposal and my concern about it uh, is it sounded like there was a specific agenda of issues that would be the focus of the study. I was trying to understand if there are a set uh, agenda of issues that are in mind for this particular study as opposed to a, a spirit-led, whatever we come up with type That's of an right. approach. So that, that to me would be very important to know what was the underwriting, um, driving purpose. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Morris, can you speak to that? Yes, thank you for that. Um, I think it does need to be spirit-led, and I think it also needs to be led by what is on the hearts and minds of our individuals. Um, I think with the um, 
reality of congregations in this synod that even now are considering disaffiliation and the issues over which they are considering disaffiliation. I think those are things that we have to talk about um, so that people are allowed to uh, discern and ask for the Spirit's guidance themselves. Um, my, my idea is largely to let the, the, the Spirit and the people guide what we talk about. And then it becomes incumbent upon us as their uh, pastors, their leaders, to help bring Scripture, help them bring Scripture into that conversation and let the Spirit work as it will. Thank you. Pastor Holman, would you like to add to that? What he said. <laughs> what he said yeah it, and if your bible studies are not led by the spirit at any time you probably got a problem thank you microphone one michael burke from our lay voting member st james sumter um I, one thing i wanted to mention uh with this resolution is that we have a lot of people in our church in our local congregations they come to church on sunday they they come on wednesday they're part of the church life but they don't often know what goes on at the synod level or the elca um and i think just having that awareness of of learning about you know the church structure and what each what each part does is very important and i would also say uh, it's very possible. I imagine I'm not too familiar with the ELCA. You know, I mean, I know a lot about it, but I imagine it's very easy to become a, what I might call a might, I might call a professional church person, where you could be in the ELCA offices, and it's it's very possible not to really get involved in local congregations. But I imagine it seems to me that they they generally do. But I think it's possible to be like a professional church person and not really think about what goes on in the local congregational life. So I think at both ends of our, of our denomination where between the local congregations, the synod, and the ELCA churchwide, this is good for everybody because we're going to be aware of each, uh, of, each of our threefold parts. Um, I, have, I have people in my own congregation, they, they either don't know what the ELCA really is or uh if if it's something that's not really benefiting them they don't just you know we, they don't really do nothing for us um so I, i'm hoping that we can all become aware of one another um i just my point in all this was just to say that we have people that aren't even aware of the synod and the and the churchwide assembly and i think that will be important going forward to have that awareness thank you there, uh, microphone three I am Patrick Preacher, I'm Trinity Lutheran Greenville, and more specifically, I serve as the Queer and Justice Ministry Coordinator at Trinity. And so I just want to say for the record that some of the language such as disaffiliation and getting into the true meaning of what scripture says regarding um, current issues is very triggering for me because it sounds like this may lead down a path of further exclusion of the queer community just because those are the words that we have heard as queer people when people have attempted to exclude us. So I guess my question would be, is, is this headed towards discerning whether or not queer people or other marginalized people belong as full inclusive members of the church? Or um, like it just feels very vague. And I'm sorry I'm not very eloquent right now because my heart is racing just because of some of the feelings that some of these words, hopefully not un unintentionally, right, have made me feel. So, but I just wanted to voice that for the record. Thank I appreciate you, the time. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think that the intention is that we get into intentional scriptural study that will open us up to what the scripture is about. That's what I think the intention is. Am I correct? Yes, the author tells me that's the correct assumption. Microphone one. My name is Andrew Boozer. I'm a voting member from St. Paul Pomeria. St. Paul Pomeri has been a part of the South Carolina Synod for its entire being. From the very beginnings of Lutheranism in South Carolina, my family has been a member. Last time I spoke at, 
assembly, I cried. I was trying not to do that today because it was when our church burned in 2013. The last two years, our church has burned from within, from the pews. It's been chaos. There have been two disaffiliation votes in the last year. They both passed. This spring, the Senate Council voted not to allow the disaffiliation. And the first time this has ever happened in our Senate. In transparency, I was a dissenting voice for disaffiliation. I'm sorry I'm using that word because I just heard that's a triggering word and I'm sorry, but that's what happened. I didn't think this could happen at St. Paul, at a place that built the Senate, where Senate assemblies were held in our sanctuary. But it did. And it happened without a single intentional biblical discussion. The news that was given from member to member was often found from cable news or social media. Despite the attempts, I will say, from the bishop's office, that is how it happened. And I fully believe that it will happen in congregations that are present in this room this morning. And for that reason, I wholeheartedly support this resolution and empower each of us, while I may not be in a leadership position at St. Paul anymore where I can do this, I, empo I empower each of you to take this resolution should it pass to heart. And not just the pastors, not just the rostered leaders, but as lay leaders in your congregations, have these hard conversations. Find those issues. There's no longer one issue at hand. Find those issues in your community that are causing division and live through it with the word of Jesus and not the word of cable news or social media. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone three. Thank you, Bishop. Um, Benjamin Bullock. I am the council president at Re Reformation Lutheran Church here in Columbia. Reformation is a congregation, is a reconciling in Christ congregation. Uh, we are committed to ministries that serve and uplift gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, uh, and queer people in uh, the Lutheran Church and in the community at large. Uh, that has been our commitment, and we have reaffirmed it over and over again for almost 15 years now. Um, I hear this resolution, and I love the spirit of it in general, because we should be focused on being united. Um, the fact that the issues that are dividing us are not named gives me a little cause for concern. And I would ask the authors to consider naming those issues um, so that we have clarity on that matter. Um, and so that folks can vote on the resolution knowing what those issues are. Um, I, I suspect I know what some of those issues are. Although I will say that the role of LGBTQ people in this church is not a question of um, debate at Reformation. We, we thank you. But there are, there are other issues in this church that do need discussion and that we need to maintain ongoing discussion of, particularly on issues and matters of racial justice. Uh, in the e ELCA, in this synod, and in our own congregations. And I would encourage the authors to include discussions on racial justice in the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Microphone one. Hello. Oh, excuse me. I've been here a while. Sorry. I was looking at just one or three. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I apologize if two was told not to speak at this microphone, but I was uh, round and round and round and round the um, garage, so it took me a little bit to okay. get here. Um, I'm Karen Hazelwood from St. Luke Olympia, um, right here in Columbia, and I had the Humankind shirt on last yesterday, and I, I hate that we have to say 
our church, name our church and say that we are committed to LGBTQ, I, I, that should be a blank. We're all wearing the same shirt. These are what we're supposed to uphold. And as a Bible study, I hope we're talking about the gospel because our sermons are supposed to be gospel led, gospel. The law is the gospel, not Leviticus not the old testament the gospel i was in my garden this morning and this weighed on me and i and that's because i loved the gentleman last night the, the minister from greenwood and i i apologize i'm bad with names when he said that people left their lutheran church because of law the law that they have to feel like they have to follow i had a catholic friend that came to me once in school and said I can't believe you, Luther. Grace. Grace. It's grace because she always talked about her Catholic guilt. And I said, yeah, grace. I work out at an Episcopal, I mean, at a Presbyterian church and a woman's devotional talked about radical acceptance. 30 seconds. That she was going to practice radical acceptance. Acceptance shouldn't be radical. It should not be radical. It should be acceptance. Jesus said, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. That's the law. Thank you. And now I have to follow that. Um, Hang on one second. I think that was in favor, Pastor, so I'm going to go over here. Okay, that's fine. If you're in favor and you need to speak, go to microphone one. If you're opposed, go to microphone three. Microphone three. I'm Pastor Ginger Littman Kuhn from All Saints in Mount Pleasant, and um, I really appreciate uh, Pastor Morris and Pastor Holman bringing this up. I think we have all observed these kind of conversations going on in the congregation. And I agree that we need to address them, and we shouldn't ignore them. My concern is putting a resolution on the record of this synod's assembly that seems to, in a way, maybe unintentionally, kind of draw a divide between the congregations of the South Carolina Synod and the ELCA. And I think what Pastor Emily was talking about in her assembly um, FAQ was that we are the assembly. We are the synod in the same way. We are the congregation of the ELCA, and we are the ELCA. So I think my concern is um, kind of setting up animosity between one expression and another in this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Microphone one. Stephen Mims, uh, Pisgah, Lexington. It used to be that we agreed to disagree and then it went to I'm right, you're wrong. Now it's I'm right, you're evil. Um, and that's an, that is a, a horrible issue in our congregations. Uh, I, I realize that uh, a lot of the triggers are what we're gonna talk about. But I, I think for many of us in the congregations, we need to understand how to have a discussion as a body of Christ where people can hear and experience both sides, where, where people can know that no matter where you are right now, I'm still going to love you when we walk out of this room. Uh, and as, as I hear this, this resolution, that, that's what I'm hearing. I, I don't believe that it's taking a stand one way or another on any of the current issues. What it's showing is that we are all part of the body of Christ. And we need to remember that because there are people coming in our churches where they're vacant, trying to take them out of this body of Christ. And that's got to stop. And if this resolution is in some small way able to keep the South Carolina Senate unified and keep this body unified, then I am all for it because we are all part of one mission, all of us. 
And seconds. we need to start talking about the mission that we are all a part of. And it starts with being all in the body of Christ. Thank you. Microphone three. Pastor Megan Leinberger, Bethel White Rock. I'm in favor of it, and I just want to add, I'm in a congregation who, in 2013, 2014, had a major split over the same issues of ELCA, NALC, and what they've come a long way. They have healed a lot, but what I consistently hear from faithful members is there was never time for faithful conversation, faithful scripture. It was always heated and hate. Field. And I believe, because I'm in the Heartland Conference with Pastor Bobby and Pastor Ard, the goal of this is faithful conversation. And I have heard it from people who are still wounded. That is what we need. And holy conversation to let people know there's a place for them at the table. So thank you for the resolution. I speak for it. And we need to not pretend the issues aren't there, because they are, and all people are welcome in our church. We're the ELCA. We're still here for a reason. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think that we may have exhausted the conversation for the moment and look forward to more conversation moving forward. At this time, uh, I wonder if the assembly is ready to vote. Okay, I've got a call for the question. Thank you. I need a second. Thank you. I'd like to ask um, before we vote, huh? Yes, I know we can vote on it, but I'd, I'd like to ask before we vote on this for um, Chaplain Price to come to the microphone for prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Issues and human beings, they are not the same thing. You, Lord God, love humans all of us, everyone in this room, all of those who have been overlooked, all of those who have been marginalized, all of those who have been cast aside. Your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, came preaching the gospel for humans. Turn us away from turning humans into issues. Turn us toward how we live out your gospel, how we live out the grace that you so freely give us. As we vote on this resolution of unity, we invite the Holy Spirit to bring clarity, to bring purpose, to bring us together, to continue to proclaim to human beings that they are worthy of your love. And you have made this sure and certain through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Be with us now as we vote and move us in the direction of unity and move us in the direction of clarity and move us in the direction of none other than your steadfast love and faithfulness which endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. So the first vote that we're taking now is a yes or no vote on the calling of the question. That's really all we're taking is, do we need to have further discussion or do we agree with the calling of the question? Is the assembly ready to vote? Lumi, are you ready? What? Requires a two thirds vote for calling of the question. Vote now.
please quiet down while the voting is taking place? Do I have somebody that has an issue with the voting? Raise your hand, please. Okay. I just don't know if that person has had a chance to vote. Does anybody need more time? You good? Voting is closed. Can we see the results? Okay, that vote passes, 273 in favor of calling the question. Thank you. And now we will go to the vote on the resolution. And that's a simple majority vote. Everybody ready? Wait. Okay, vote now. I can see the numbers, and there are people still voting. Please quiet down while the voting is taking place. Voting is closed. May we see the results? The vote passes. 254 in favor. Thank you. Linda, I believe that you'll continue your report on Saturday. Thank you for the work. Thank you, Assembly. Look forward to our opportunity to study scripture together across the South Carolina Senate.